Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more Hard Space Shipbreaker. As we continue along poking and prodding at these hulls, we made quite a bit of progress and a few disappointments. Again, when, just when we think we're getting somewhere with the core and we might be able to do something clever, uh, it proceeds to sort of jank up and show us that there is only kind of like one true way to pull the core out, one or two, you know. That's such a shame. It really... I really, you know, I've said this many times before, but the sooner they, they sort out whatever they're doing with their optimization of this engine so it can run on computers, the sooner people can start doing some interesting things with the cores. But as it is now, the risk isn't just worth it. As soon as you shit the bed and drop it, it's not that the ship just blows up and you continue work. It's that it bricks your computer's performance and you have to do a reboot just about, or restart the game at the very least. And when is the risk ever worth that? What game have you ever played? where, oh, I'm going to try something interesting and clever, but I'll have to turn the game off if it doesn't work. Like, you know, it's a bit strange. But anyway, I digress. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Oh, we'll do one of the very hard hulls. So, today, I'm not that worried about the core. Though I suppose what's going to drive me is getting the core out, though we're not going to touch it. Um... We're going to go in, we're going to peel off the front layers. Uh, we're, we also want to sort of play with the cockpit, detaching it. You know, I'm not I'm not 100% sold on getting the best way to maybe explosively decompress it. But either way, we can peel the top front third and the top middle third off. And sort of just the front in general. Um, and we can detach the central structure from the shell. Though the bottom shell might be the next sort of project, and I was thinking about that, it probably weighs significantly more with all the containers attached. So you might want to just detach the containers, you know, just do the little little animation thing. And then sort of, it will, will address what the heat is, uh, not the heat, the, uh, the weight is from there. Um, so... We had a problem when this happened last time. What if we were to burn this whole thing out? Air pressure level decreasing. Salvage destroyed. Please refrain from damaging salvage. Right, no, I'm an idiot. We've done exactly this. Sorry. Um, for those not aware, what that, if the ship is, has air in it, is it's pressurized, what that indicates, and I just got to get into the habit of remembering, is that the airlocks are open. Or, regardless, it's not cause and effect specifically, but the fact of the matter is, if the interior of the ship is pressurized, then the airlocks are open, which means... We need to cycle the situation so that we can pop the airlock. So we've got to kind of got to go inside and depressurize the inside so the airlocks can actually be isolated as their own closed system. My bad, team. Sorry about that. But in this case, we're a bit better off. So we won't have to do that. I just have to get in the habit of remembering that, you know? Oh, Jesus Christ. That made me flinch in real life. Huh. All right, well, there are our airlock pops fairly clean. Yeah. We'd love to pull that barrel out the top, but that's not what we're looking at today. All right. Let's get moving. Um, what's going on here? Hang on. Um, I think we're going to need to smash that ladder. Maybe not, actually, because we can detect the, uh, delete the straddle parts on it. But that's not the end of the world. Um, 
That's interesting. We could decompress that. I guess the danger of banking on the decompression is what happens when we don't have the decompression. So here's something I was thinking about the other day. What if I were to do a cut there? Uh-oh. Air pressure level increasing. Don't do that. How does that happen? How on earth did that happen? Well, I mean, at the very least, have a look at this. These fucking things stayed connected anyway. Despite the explosion. How on earth did that happen? Oh, I can't even comprehend. Um. Well, that doesn't do us any good, does it? Oh, well, that's nice. What's leaking coolant here? Isn't that interesting? Something's leaking coolant there, but the countdown time for the reactor hasn't started. The things you learn. What to make of that? What can we do with that information? Not much. Okay, so... Is there an easy way to detach all these containers? Because how much do you weigh, Mr. Container? 1.2... Call it 1.3 tonne. It adds up. Alright, while we're here, we'll inspect. Actually, no, let's cut everything away. I want to get an idea of what the weight of the bottom section is going to be. Alright. No keel interfering there because we've got double doors. So that's cool. I believe there's a connection under here. Probably don't want to cut that coolant line behind it. Alright. Ultimately we would detach this. And likely we'll just push this with the old noodle that was interesting how the cockpit exploded the back end of the ship it sort of makes uh, explosive decompression of the cockpit off limits you know hmm Go with two tethers and see how that goes. So that bottom one might lose line of sight, not sure. Alright. I don't know if there's any getting around cutting the four corners of this thing. How are you still attached? There you go. Um, that's still going strong. And we cut these two.
Alright. Okay, so that's all peeling apart nicely, or it should be. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so as far as the uh, the bottom parts... Oh, hang on, what made it? That front section? Okay, so, so two tethers got it there in the end. So that's good to know that the sort of heart, the one third front section will will do all right that way. All right, so seventy two tons. Does that sound about right to you guys? Seventy three ton. Bit much, isn't it? What is still attaching the structure to my 73 ton? Because they're not technically touching. Okay. Even with the whole back end blown out. This is quite a mystery, isn't it? You know what the connection is? Don't buy it off more than you can chew. This is the coolant room. It's this to being connected to the floor. Seventy two point seven ton. Well actually, what are you technically connected to? What happens if I drill this out? Let's see. Interesting. Salvage destroyed. Please refrain from damaging salvage. Sixty-nine ton. Reactor meltdown sequence triggered. Sixty-nine ton. Huh. That's not the problem. What is the problem?
That can't be it. What the fuck? That was literally it. 49 ton. 20 ton. Oh my god. Oxygen reserves are low. Reminder, asphyxiation can lead to missed salvage quotas. That's crazy. Oh well. Shit, I don't know what's going on here. My O2's running out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit busy, Mo. Look at that, what a, what a bloody save. Alright, so that didn't make it in with that many bloody tethers. It's cool looking, eh, when you do it like this. Alright, so... About 20 ton is the whole superstructure. We're getting there, we really are. Um, and even though it was that stupid fucking heat sink that was keeping everything connected, the coolant pipe was still a legitimate issue as well. Alright, so 20 ton. If we'd have cut this here, 10. Now that's a pretty good split, to be perfectly honest, right? And as we discovered, you should be able to just drag that away, right? Even with one tether. Oh, well, it doesn't have line of sight, but... Oh, it is moving. It's moving very slowly, but it was moving. Okay, okay. Um, oh, as a pretty epic uh, save on the core, plus getting oxygen. Um, yeah, okay. So. Actually, no, when I think about it. No, 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 no. It was just the cool... The, yeah, the cooling system wasn't attached to the skin, right? Okay, so if we were to have removed the... Uh, the heat sink, the whole interior would have been 20 ton, right? Which is still too heavy. Which is still too heavy to move or do anything with, right? I guess we could attempt to surgically remove the coolant line and leave the pipe intact. That seems to start to get a bit fidgety. I mean, I guess you gotta start asking the question, what do we need to get the reactor out safe every time? You know, like guaranteed. What's the cleanest way to do the reactor? Um, And deleting that base plate was pretty awesome. But ultimately, it was still hooked on the end of the pipes. Um, and it was incredibly hard to get that out that way.
And I might just have to bite the bullet and cut the pipes. Oh, I don't know. It's tough, all these overlaying systems. But we're definitely uh, making progress on, you know, the splaying the whole thing apart. We might actually start trying to speed that stuff up. That's why I'm sort of trying to measure out how many tethers each quadrant needs. You saw that we had the, you know, the front section we have to cut into a two-third section and a one-third section because the big one's too heavy and we can't just split it because it's made in thirds. But that one-third went with two tethers uh, easily. So that was cool. The other one probably we could put three or four on. I suppose we're going to figure out the economy of it. Uh, same for the top sections as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we are moving forward. It's all very interesting. I hope you guys are still enjoying this clinical approach. I'm, I'm getting a kick out of it for sure. Yeah. Anyway, thanks again for joining me, T. We might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.